In this video, we'll learn about voltage regulation with diodes. First, what's a voltage regulator? A voltage regulator is a circuit that we rely on to produce a constant DC voltage at the output. Often, the voltage is provided with respect to ground. So, what differs between a voltage regulator and a simple voltage source? Well, a voltage regulator doesn't generate a voltage on its own. It has to be supplied by a DC source in order to do its work. Now, we're relying on the voltage regulator to produce a voltage VO that remains constant in the presence of variations in whatever load may be connected to it, as well as with respect to any variations in the supply voltage. Now, you might think that a voltage regulator looks like a relatively trivial circuit, but in fact, it can be surprisingly difficult to maintain a very tight range of output voltages VO in the presence of large variations in load current and source uh, supply voltage. And very often the performance of a voltage regulator circuit is really critical to the overall performance of the system that it's in. One way to make a voltage regulator is to rely on the relatively constant voltage drop across a diode that's forward conducting. Remember that diodes exhibit this hockey stick shaped IV characteristic so that the forward voltage drop across it when it's conducting is limited over a very narrow range over a very wide um, range of current values. Uh, after all, that's why we defined the constant voltage drop model. So that we know in the example shown here on the left that the voltage VD, which can be thought of as the output of the regulator, is maintained at a relatively constant 0.7 volts by the diode. Of course, this is just an approximation we can use to find the bias point of the circuit. When we see variations in either the supply voltage here, or if we connect a load resistor at the output of this regulator circuit, with an unknown possibly varying resistance resulting in a varying load current being drawn at the output of the regulator, then we will indeed see fluctuations in the output of this voltage regulator. And we can find those fluctuations using the small signal model of the diode. An obvious limitation of using forward bias diodes as regulators is that each diode only produces a 0.7 volt uh, drop across it. You can get other output voltages from the regulator simply by using series combinations of multiple diodes. So in the example shown here, three diodes have been stacked on top of each other. Um, they're biased with a DC supply voltage of 10 volts so that all are forward conducting. And so each results in a 0.7 volt drop. We can analyze for the operating point Q with a constant forward voltage drop model with a three 0 0.7 volt drops result in a constant voltage drop of 2.1 volts. And then we can solve for the resulting drain current. It's the 7.9 volt drop across the resistor with a value of one kilo ohm giving rise to 7.9 milliamps of current. If we've got a one kilo ohm load connected at the output of the regulator as pictured on the left, then we know that there would be a load current drawn here that's equal to the 2.1 volt drop over the one kilo ohm resistor 
and that's 2.1 milliamps flowing over here. That leaves the forward current through the diodes, ID equaling 7.9 minus 2.1 milliamps or 5.8 milliamps. This is then the solution of the bias point of this regulator circuit operating with a 10 volt supply and a 1 kilo ohm load. If we are interested in what will happen when we um, make small variations in, for example, the supply voltage of one volt, then we can replace the diodes with their small signal equivalent model. So in order to do so, we've got three diodes here. The supply voltage now we've already taken into account the 10 volt bias point on the supply so we're really in the small signal analysis just interested in the incremental change plus minus one volt in this case the resistor r is already a linear component so it remains unchanged one kilo ohm it looks like one kilo ohm in the bias point analysis and it also looks like one kilo ohm with respect to small incremental changes and then the diodes are each replaced by a resistance RD. Given by VT over ID. Oops. At room temperature, we know VT is about 25 millivolts and the bias current ID we just calculated at 5.8 milliamps. And then again, we've got our load resistor one kilo ohm here. And since it's a passive component, it looks like a resistor with respect to the bias point and that and also small signals. So that's our small signal equivalent schematic. And we can analyze that. We can do a straightforward linear circuit analysis to see how much change in the output voltage here, VO, would result uh, from one volt changes in the supply voltage. So over here, here's our DC quantity, capital V with capital O subscript. On the right, we've got a small signal analysis. So we've got all lowercase symbols. And uh, if we wanted to put them together into the complete solution, we could say that VO over here is the superposition of the bias voltage VO and the small signal lowercase VO. Another method for making a voltage regulator with a diode is to use Zener diodes reverse biased. An appropriately chosen Zener diode can be used to produce a reference voltage at the output of the regulator that's practically any value you might want. The Zeners are sold with voltage ratings anywhere from about two volts all the way up to beyond 10 volts. So in this case, we've got a 6.8 volt Zener diode with a reverse bias voltage applied by this 10 volt nominal supply voltage here. And the resistor here provides the voltage drop from the 10 volt supply to the 6.8 volt Zener, resulting in DC current flowing this way. And that current will split. Some of it will flow through the Zener in the reverse direction, and some of it will flow through the load. Remember that a Zener is intended to operate under reverse bias in Zener breakdown. So here we see the Zener diode reverse biased, replaced with its equivalent model which consists of the DC voltage source with a value Z, VZ0 and its uh, resistance, equivalent resistance, RZ. The current being drawn from the supply voltage V plus is indicated with the current I here. And again, some of that flows reverse through the Zener and some of it flows into the load. And uh, we can use this equivalent schematic to solve for the output voltage of the regulator VO uh, the currents everywhere in the circuit 
and we can then see that if there's any variation in the supply voltage or in the load resistance, we would see uh, we could resolve the circuit and find the corresponding changes in the output of the voltage regulator. Now, writing a nodal equation at the output, we would see that I is to equal the sum of the Zener current and the load current. And we must remember that the model that we've adopted for the Zener diode in this case is only uh, applicable, is only accurate when we've got reverse current flowing through the diode. That is, when IZ labeled with the polarity indicated here is greater than zero. So in order for that to be the case, it means that for this circuit to operate properly, we must have the current I through the resistor R exceeding the current IL through the load resistor RL. So as um, RL R or V plus changes, we always have to make sure that this condition is met. If not, then what it would imply is current flowing in the other direction through the Zener. And that uh, can't be the case with a reverse bias voltage applied. So uh, instead, what it would mean is that actually the model we've drawn here is not applicable anymore. Rather than in reverse Zener breakdown, the diode would in fact be operating just in the cutoff state and in an off state. And so therefore, a more appropriate model would simply be an open circuit and the resulting equivalent uh, schematic would change quite a bit and the output voltage uh, would be different as well.